that's me, this morning. And I'm just fucking stupid. In 15 years as a DJ and producer, I still haven't learned when to stop partying. Waking up the next morning is a challenge. Standing, walking, disposing my vomit and wondering about the colors and shapes. Brushing my teeth, trying not to throw up again. Trying to eat for the first time. And if even taking a shower doesn't help, you know you fucked up again. I don't even know why I'm in the studio. I still feel destroyed beyond repair. If you want to know how this happened, just check out yesterday's video. But today is about like the last time I felt the same as today. And that was roughly four years ago, me DJing on tour a little tour, weekend tour in Norway. Started Friday, packing to the airport, train, another train, security check, airplane to Amsterdam, waiting. Thanks. Another flight to Oslo, another train, getting picked up. Yeah. Is this here? Yes. Yeah. Hi, hey. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Quick check in, now two hours to um, rest a bit and prepare my DJ set. To the club. You're the guys from Germany? Yes, all right. Welcome. DJ. Luckily, at least for me, during that time, in Norway, 3 in the morning, all clubs have to stop and close, by law. I don't know why, it's a little weird, but usually you DJ until like 6, 5, 6 kind of in the morning. Next day, breakfast at Subway, one hour sightseeing just to catch another train, another flight. By the way, I'm now in Bergen. Driving, checking in, buying fruits. Fruit helps you when you're hungover. We're gonna. We're gonna do like a preemptive strike. It didn't help at all. To the club, DJing, to the airport, and then the next week all over again. So I have now two more hours to explore the city. Then I have to head to the airport to catch my flight to Amsterdam. Then another flight to Dusseldorf just to stay there one night. And then I have to get another flight to Israel. But that's something for next week. It might seem like fun at first glance, but it's not. It's like vacation boiled down to the single most annoying part about it, and that is just the traveling part. I've been to Switzerland five times. I haven't seen anything else despite airport, train, hotel, club. That's it. I don't know anything about what Switzerland looks like. And my touring life, honestly, is a joke. Like, I'm a tiny, tiny, tiny speck in this entire DJ world cosmos. The top DJs on this planet they DJ a lot more all around the globe, 24-7, 365 days a year. Let's just take Steve Aoki as an example. He has probably around 300 gigs per year. 300 per year. That leaves you with 65 days without a gig. This of course also means flying probably twice as much because you have to get there and back. And this doesn't even account for connection flights. So it's probably even more. I don't even know how, how this is possible. I have like the highest respect for, for these top DJs touring so much. And don't even get me started like telling you the story about Avicii. You're probably all aware of what happened. May he rest in peace. And on top of the traveling, which is annoying, you also have like this kind of pressure because you're the DJ. You're for the ones that book you special that night, also for the guests. So you can't be the party pooper. You can't tell them, no, today I'm not drinking because I've been drinking every single weekend for this entire year. I, I can't. They're like, hey, come on, just one drink and have fun with us. They kind of expect it. And then you have all of the drugs and I, I've seen things like envelopes full of cocaine worth more than, than most cars. It's really sometimes that crazy. To understand all of this a bit more, let's, let's talk about the reasons why DJs actually tour Although it's so demanding. Money, yes, definitely. That's that's a natural reason. It's your job, you need to earn money. Is there more pressure because it's a lot of money? Yes, definitely. Is greed a factor? Yes, for some, probably. Constantly pushing forward, trying to progress, becoming more relevant, being present, big factor. Competition, fear of missing out, 100%. If you don't take that gig, 
someone else will. And the worst, by far, some DJs have contracts with the management that are so, so fucked up that they can't even decide themselves if they take a gig or not. The manager can just decide for them. And canceling isn't really an option because there are fans waiting for you, a lot of pressure, you don't want to disappoint them. Once you become a big DJ, if you cancel, you, you get financially punished for it. There is like an entire festival, you're the headliner, you cancel. The guests will be upset and need to be refunded. Another factor in recent years is also definitely how the consumption of music has changed from CDs to downloads, now streaming. There is less and less money that you actually make by making music and people listening to it. You have to tour, you have to sell merch, you have to. There is no other way. So what's the solution or what could be the solution to this problem? Right now, COVID-19. It's not fun, don't get me wrong. I hate it, I hope it will be over as soon as possible. It screws so many people's lives. But from talking to a lot of my DJ colleagues, some of them have to admit that not touring that much actually helped them a lot with their physical and mental health. And I hope that a lot of the ones that are now slowed down and grounded will maybe once all of this is over, remember that there's also a life without constantly touring and just slow down a bit. Also to all aspiring DJs, producers, never ever sell your soul. If you sign a contract with the management, make sure 100% that it's the right decision. Otherwise you will be screwed forever and have so much trouble to a point that you can't even imagine right now. Trust me, I've been there. Biggest mistake of my life. I'm now independent and can just do whatever I want. And also to all of the music lovers, the fans, there are also some things you can do. Pay people for the music you listen to. Go to concerts of smaller local bands, DJs, support them, buy their merch. The more directly you support them, the more you'll reach and help them. Book local DJs. They're also very good, very ambitious, and can pull in sometimes more of a crowd because all of their friends live close by and they're very active than maybe a supposedly superstar DJ from far away that actually no one knows. And the worst group of people are the ones that go to concerts, that go to a Morrison Garrix show, front row, pay extra, don't even know the music, aren't real fans. They're just going there to take a selfie and put it on Instagram and feel cool about it and like write something underneath like, ooh, Martin Garrix even looked at me. That's just bullshit, stop that, please. This just leads to like a, a bigger gap and spread between DJs. There are some DJs DJing for free that are as good as DJs that earn like half a million, a million per gig, like the prizes for, for the top, top DJs, it just went up like crazy. And I think that's also something that like makes this pressure and this fear of missing out and like forcing yourself to DJ and being overly ambitious, it makes it even worse because there is more on the line. But let me try and end this on a more positive note because I personally, I love DJing. That's, that's what got me into this entire world of music. I started DJing out of a passion for music. I then even got into music production. And now both these things are like my full-time job and I couldn't be happier. This is like a dream come true with a lot of like, <laughs> like ups and downs in between. But all in all, I love DJing. I love the scene. Not every aspect of it, but most of it. I love partying, I love clubs. There is nothing in general bad about it. And like DJing in front of a crowd is probably the most rewarding feeling on the planet. Especially if you just finish a song in the studio, take it on tour, play it in front of people, and they, they actually react in a positive way. Like towards a song that you've created and a song that they probably haven't heard yet. That's like, it's just magic. It's hard to describe, but that's like a, a big, big, big thing I love about producing 
and then going out DJing. I think like um, it was one of the guys of the Swedish House Mafia. I don't know if it was Steve or Sebastian, but one of them said, you pay me not for DJing. I love it so much. I would do it for free. You pay me for traveling. And that really, like, it, it sums it up. That's how probably most, if not even all DJs think about it. So please be careful of stressing out, catching flights. If you're not in the touring game yet, maybe think twice about if that's really what you want to do. Because I know a lot of people that produce and love it but they're just not made for touring. I think at the end, it just comes down to finding that like natural balance, healthy balance that doesn't destroy you, but you're still able to do what you love. And I think everyone has to like find that out for themselves. If you get offered to tour, go tour. If it's too much, stop, back off a little, take a break for a couple of months and then just try it again. So stay safe, don't do drugs, be responsible, especially for yourself. That's also something I have to learn. So I'll try to avoid a scenario as this morning again. It was luckily just like this one time in the past three years. So I, I usually try to keep it down. Mm -hmm.